Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Priosonate Excel International A Level Biology Unit 1 for June 2022. I will do this paper in two parts and I will put the link to the second part video below the description box of this video. Let us begin. Question 1 says, water is an important biological molecule. Read through the following description of water. Complete the description by writing the most appropriate word on the dotted lines. So here they begin by saying, water has an uneven charge distribution, as we can see here. So it is described as R. Uh, it has to be polar, because remember, the water molecule looks like this. I'm trying to draw it uh, with this shape. But we know in each hydrogen-oxygen bond, the electrons are closer to the oxygen atom, like that. So that leaves it with a partially negative charge, while this is going to have a partially positive charge. So that is called polarity, and therefore water is a polar molecule, as we can see. So they're going to say the hydrogen end of the molecule have, or oh, hydrogen ends have a very slightly positive charge. Water is involved in the transport of substances, so it is an important solvent in living organisms. Water is needed in chemical reactions called hydrolysis reactions that break down disaccharides such as lactose into glucose and galactose. So if you had answered appropriately, you would get five marks for this question one. Let us move on to question two. Question two says, the blood clotting process has to be fast to prevent loss of blood from wounds. Which molecule traps red blood cells and platelets in the formation of a blood clot at a wound? We know this is supposed to be fibrin because it is the insoluble product from uh, when fibrinogen is in co converted into this uh, fibrin. You remember fibrinogen is soluble while fibrin is insoluble. So the mesh-like structure is fibrin and it traps uh, blood cells, uh, red blood cells as well as platelets around the wood, forming a clot. Part B says, how many of the following are converted into an active enzyme during blood clotting? Of course, fibrin uh, is not converted into an enzyme. Fibrinogen, it is not uh, an enzyme. It's just a protein that can be converted into something else. Uh, we know that prothrombin, yep, prothrombin can be converted and thrombin is not. So in this case I saw, I said, among all, prothrombin is the only inactive one. It is then converted into active thrombin. So prothrombin is converted into uh, thrombin. I went on further to show you what happened here. So we know prothrombin is converted into thrombin by thromboplastin. And then thrombin converts fibrinogen into fibrin. And you can see all the, 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 the these are protein structures that are soluble and those that are insoluble. So I try to show you so that we can be able to answer question C as well. So for that part, it's only one. And therefore, the answer should be an A, as we can see here. Moving down here, they say how many of the following are soluble in blood plasma? We can see fibrinogen is going to be soluble. Prothrombin is soluble. And uh, thrombin is soluble, so three of them are. Fibrin is not soluble. Let's continue to the next part. Here they say, thromboplastin is stored inside platelets. Explain the advantage of th storing thromboplastin inside platelets. If it's stored inside platelets, it means it can be contained inside and it can only come out once the job, uh, once it's required to participate in a specific reaction. Because remember, we have other, maybe we have the fibrinogen and others within the blood. If the, the enzyme comes into contact with the things that are in the substrate that is supposed to work on, then a reaction will occur in an inappropriate uh, situation. You do not want blood to clot when it's not necessary. So to prevent that or to prevent the cascade reactions that lead to clotting from occurring, uh, the thromboplastin has to be kept inside the platelet. So I say it creates a barrier between prothrombin and the thrombo thromboplastin so that prothrombin is not converted into thrombin when clotting should not occur. This prevents the blood clotting process. And storing thromboplastin inside platelets ensures that a significant amount of thromboplastin is available and released quickly when clotting is required. Remember, if we can store a lot of it somewhere, it means it's not going to be, uh, when needed, the platelets can just release it and we can have a higher concentration within a specific area when the clotting process is required to occur. So this is the end of question two. Let us move on to question three. Question three, pectinase is an enzyme that breaks down pectin. Pectin is present in the cell walls of fruits. What type of molecule is pectinase? Since pectinase is an enzyme, it should be a protein. So pectinase is a protein and the answer should be C. 
Remember these triglycerides? No, that is wrong. Polysaccharides are not enzymes, and then disaccharides are not. The only answer that is correct is a C. Part B says, explain why enzymes are described as biological catalysts. So here, you have to focus on the word biological and then focus on the word catalyst. So I said, they are biological because they are found in living organisms, or you could say they perform their task or their role in living organisms. And then they are catalysts because they speed up the rates of reactions and they are not used up in the process. Please remember, a catalyst speeds up the rate of a reaction and it's never used up in the process. So if you answered like this, you would get your two marks. Question C says, the graph shows the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction of pectinase. So we can say this is typical. The higher the temperature, the higher the rate of reaction until an optimum is reached and then we can begin to see the rate decreasing. So this is a typical rate of reaction temperature a graph over an enzyme. So I'll continue to the next page. Here they say, calculate the effect on the rate of reaction of each degree in a degree increase in temperature between 46 to 50. So here, what, we, what I wanted to see is uh, we need to find the change in Y over change in X, change in rate over change in uh, the temperature that we had. So remember, uh, they said uh, 46 to 50. So when I take you back here, let's follow up. At, uh, so at 50, we can see the vertical or the rate is 20. And then here we can see the rate is about 54. So I took those values here and they said 54 minus 20 divide by the temperatures they gave us, 50 and 46. I got a 34 over 4, and when you use a calculator, you get 8.5 AU per degree Celsius. Because, of course, the upper part was AU, and then the lower part was in degrees. So that is how we did that. So the answer is 8.5. So next they say, state why there is a decrease in the rate of reaction above the optimum temperature. Of course, this is an ideal question anytime it comes. You have to answer the same way. After the optimum temperature, the temp uh, after the optimum temperature, basically, yeah, the active size of the enzymes could begin to be disoriented or the shape is changed. Therefore, the enzymes begin to get denatured, so the substrate can no longer fit into the active site of the enzyme. So I say, because the enzyme is denatured, and the key thing you have to know what denaturation is. Denaturation occurs when the shape of the active site of the enzyme is changing. So the substrate and enzyme can no longer form a complex appropriately, and therefore, in this case, the rate of reaction uh, was seen to be decreasing. This brings us to the end of question three. Let's go to question four. So question four says, the structures of blood vessels relate to their function. The table gives information about some blood vessels in a dog. So we can see the blood vessels here, and then uh, I'm just gonna go down here, they say, complete the table. They want you to use the formula of surface area is equal to 2 pi RL. Remember here they are assuming that the blood vessel is like something like that. So surface area is going to be uh, the circumference times that length, which is what you can see there. So let's continue. They say where R is the radius of the blood vessel and L is the length of the vessel. So they wanted us to find this here. We had to find this value here and that value there. So for me to be able to find out, I had to place, remember this is total surface area. Total surface area means surface area times the number in the body. So for this, it was that. Uh, the sub, they used this and this to find the surface area and then they multiplied it by one. So to get this value here, I have to use this and that, find the surface area and multiply it by 40 because the surface area of each is going to be got by that. And then 40 of them, you find the total surface area. So I say Surface area is 2 pi RL, which is 2 pi, times the radius. Remember to find this, if, the, if the, they've given us a diameter to be 0 0.6, when you divide that by 2, you get 0 0.3, which should be the radius, and then multiply by the length, which is 20. So I got 37.699. But this is per blood vessel. So I had to multiply by the number, which is 40, in this part here, and you can see I got 1507.96. And then I say I, I converted it to standard form, which is this to one decimal point. Uh, so that's it. And now this part here, I did it because of uh, the way the answers were represented as well. Here you can see everything is in one decimal point, but it's to power. And uh, so basically they were written in standard form. So I also had to write this in standard form. So going on to the next part, finding this. 
I use the same formula. So since I knew that total surface area is that times the number they are in the body, and then this is given to me. So I say this is 2 pi r. I have the radius, but I do not have the L times the number in the body, which is 1. Then I made L the subject. L will be this divided by everything else. So the answer came out as 40.7. And again, I left it to one decimal point. As you can see, all these others were left to one decimal point. So it's 40.7. So I hope everybody gets that idea. So moving on to the next part. Here they say, explain why the velocity of blood flow in the large arteries is lower than the velocity of blood flow in the aorta. Remember, we're talking about large arteries and the aorta. So here I said, blood in the aorta has just left the left ventricle. Remember, in the left ventricle, there is a lot of pumping. Blood is going to be pumped at very high pressure. So if it has just left the left ventricle of the heart, where it has been pumped under high pressure, hence the high velocity of the blood flow. So in the aorta, we have a higher blood flow because the blood vessels have just left, the blood has just left the ventricle or the left ventricle where it has been pumped at high pressure. Now, when blood leaves the aorta, it is distributed into blood vessels that branch off. So there is resistance. This could be friction between the blood vessels and the blood, and this can reduce the velocity. So because there is no further pumping, the blood was pumped when it was leaving the heart. If it's not pumped again, velocity is going to decrease due to the friction or resistance between the blood vessels and the blood. So moving on to the next part, it says, Explain why the total surface area of capillaries needs to be so high. Remember, capillaries have to be more. So I said more capillaries will be in contact. If the total surface area is large, it means more capillaries will be in contact with the cells of the tissues, allowing more plasma to come in. Remember, it's the plasma that comes in and leaves the capillaries. This ensures a faster rate of diffusion of substances like oxygen, glucose, as well as CO2 if it's coming out of the cells to be taken away in order for the cells to be to participate to have respiration basically to perform respiration so moving on so here they say part d the diagrams show the relative proportions of components formed in blood ves uh, vessel walls which diagram represents the wall of a large artery so we can see large arteries you can see here they should have elastic fibers which are higher than collagen fibers how larger than smooth muscles and then endothelial cell walls so the answer came out to be a in comparison to the others we can see here so this one made more sense and lastly here they say draw a diagram using the style above to represent the cell walls of capillaries now we know capillaries have only endothelial cells so it doesn't matter where you draw it big like that or small a little bit like that or like that provided you only draw one only the endothelial cell layer no collagen fibers no elastic fibers no smooth muscles, only this, you would get the answer correct. So this brings us to the end of question four, as well as the end uh, of this part of the video. Please do not forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.